Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. Long before huge reptilian predators like mosasaurs, plesiosaurs and pliosaurs dominated the oceans, many different invertebrate species ruled the waters. Today we're taking a look at the Eurypterids, a diverse group of arthropods sometimes known as sea scorpions. Although not true scorpions, they are considered to be related to modern arachnids such as scorpions and spiders. These creatures spanned an incredibly long time, with the earliest dating to around 467 million years ago, and the latest surviving until the mass extinction at the end of the Permian period around 248 million years ago. They are an incredibly diverse group of animals with many different shapes and sizes. For this episode I'd like to focus on one genus of eruptid, the Jekyllopterus, as this is the species that is supposedly represented here in Ark. Unusually for the game developers, they seem to have underrepresented the animal size. The Jekyllopterus is said to be the largest arthropod that ever lived, measuring 2.3 to 2.6 metres in length. That's around 7.5 to 8.5 feet, and would have been around a metre longer if you include the length of the claws stretched out in front of it. At this size, it beats even the giant millipede Arthropleura, which also features in Ark and is huge in the game. It is possible that the eruptid we see here is based upon a second, smaller species of Jacolopterus found in Wyoming, which only measured 80 centimetres, that's about 2.5 feet in length. The size of the larger species of Jacolopterus is only an estimated size, as no complete fossilised remains have been found. This species was named and identified from the remains of a single claw found in Germany. This claw measured 36.64 centimetres, about 14.3 inches but it was missing around a quarter of its length, indicating that it would have been around 45.5 cm, about 17.9 inches long. To work out the full size of the arthropod it belonged to, researchers collected information on other sea scorpions and the ratio between their claw size and body length. This turned out to be relatively consistent across species, and so they were fairly confident in their estimations. Exactly how or why this animal grew to the size it did is unclear. Giant arthropods, including huge millipedes and dragonflies, are known to have existed on land during the Carboniferous, some 359 million to 299 million years ago. Their existence is sometimes explained by an increase in the levels of atmospheric oxygen at that time. This could have allowed creatures with breathing systems that relied on the diffusion of oxygen into tissues, rather than full-blown respiratory systems, to grow much larger. But giant aquatic sea scorpions existed before this oxygen boost. Another theory holds that the size of these animals is a result of an evolutionary arms race with their prey, which included armoured fish. Maybe they grew so big because of the lack of competition from vertebrates. When vertebrates arrived, it could have spelled the end for the giant arthropods. Across prehistory, most Eurypterids lived in marine environments, but over time some species evolved to live in brackish or even freshwater. The Jacolopterus was one of those species. It would have lived in the freshwater systems of what is now Germany. The morphology and body construction of Jacolopterus suggests it lived an entirely aquatic life, and it is very unlikely that an arthropod with the size and build of Jacolopterus would be able to walk on land. Jacolopterus had a large number of lenses in its compound eyes and good stereoscopic vision. Its claws were strong with adaptions for puncturing and grasping prey, similar to modern scorpions and crustaceans. Puncture wounds likely caused by Jacolopterus have been found on some fish fossils. The latest research indicates that Jacolopterus was an active and visual predator. Fully grown Jacolopterus would have been an apex predator in its environment, and likely preyed upon smaller arthropods including their own kind, and early vertebrates. The visual acuity of Jacolopterus increased with age, with smaller specimens having relatively worse eyesight. This has been interpreted as indicating that adult Jacolopterus lived in darker environments, such as in deeper water. Trace fossil evidence of Eurypterids also supports such a conclusion, indicating that Eurypterids migrated to nearshore environments to mate and spawn. A powerful and active predator, Jacolopterus was likely highly agile and possessed high manoeuvrability. The hydromechanics of the swimming paddles and the talons of Jacolopterus suggest that, like other members of the group, they were capable of hovering, forward locomotion and quick turns. Though they were not necessarily rapid swimming animals, they were likely able to give chase to prey in habitats such as lagoons and estuaries. 
Well, that's all I have for you this week. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. I hope you join me next time when we'll be looking at the lead sick this. I'll see you then. Goodbye.